guys, have you not really been that enthusiastic about watching any of WWE's pay-per-view offerings lately? Is it because the product is bad? Or is it because WWE are shooting themselves in the foot and effectively undermining their own pay-per-views? Let's find out then, shall we? Hey guys, Cream Crazy here. Welcome to Wrestling Round 78. We're pursuing forward, as you can tell. Anyway, as you saw in that intro there, in my opinion, WWE have been doing themselves in a really bad favour here. They have been undermining their own pay-per-views. Now, you may be saying to me, what the hell, why would they be doing that? Their pay-per-view buy rates are down considerably from years ago, and it's probably due to fan reception being poor, which you can obviously expect, but honestly guys, it doesn't seem that is the only reason. We may be the ones who fuel and line McMahon's pocket with money every time a pay-per-view comes out once a month, and honestly having Hell in a Cell doing three weeks after the battleground may be a reason there. But the fact of the matter is, WWE don't do themselves any favours, and I think honestly, many times I have said this before, they keep thinking that because we watch WWE and we like the brand and we will keep loyal to the brand in spite of TNA and Ring of Honor and wrestling companies around the world, we would buy it regardless. And that mindset behind that is really quite toxic because people, they don't understand that we at the moment are a little bit disgruntled with what we have. While the main event storyline is pretty, pretty, pretty good, the rest of the card is rubbish in respect to that. In it just doesn't make sense how you can make something so top-heavy and expect people to go along with it. Then again, it happened in the Attitude Era when Austin McMahon basically took up every single thing and everything else beneath it until around 2000 was pretty much not getting much at all. The fact of the matter is, WWE has that mindset where we are loyal to the product, we will buy whatever happens. That is a really bad idea. Because look at the bloody fan reception of the product. The ratings are going down. The pie rates are going down. The talent is not being widely accepted. And that may be because our ideas of what's good and what's bad in WWE and wrestling in general are being projected on the screen thusly. But what I will say is quite annoying that WWE keep thinking, oh, just because we like it, we'll buy. Sure, if we were all kayfabe-induced back when we first started watching until the proverbial straw broke the camel's back and forced us to look into a more realist, analytical perspective like many people do on YouTube or the internet, we find it very difficult to embrace that. Because then we have to start thinking about the real-world aspects of money and whether the matches we want to see are going to be worth it. Or in the case of the last couple of pay-per-views, whether the actual outcomes of these matches are worth the money we invest. Or in fact, even if the matches are going to be good enough in the first place. It's very difficult to judge, and WWE should basically try and flesh them out as much as they can with as much story building and as much psychology in the feud as much as they can. Unfortunately, they don't even try. The fact of the matter is, this is also hurt, and pay per views are always hurt, by the amount of under-promotion WWE has done with their pay-per-views in the last couple of years. I mean, seriously, we used to know about a damn pay-per-view <laughs> way easier than we do now. Again, it's like the idea that they expect us to know it's coming around because we know our stuff. Um, no. A lot of the casual fans don't know when things are happening unless they're told. I certainly, when I was considering myself a casual fan, a person who was only really watching it out or just getting into it, I didn't know these things were coming around. It was TV advertising that got me to know that a pay-per-view was coming. And even the last couple of pay-per-views, when I've watched the Sky Sports stream. I expect to see a Skybox office or a Sky Sports 1 advert for the pay-per-view. I don't even see that, and that could be down to Sky Sports not thinking it's that much of a priority in comparison to all their other coverages that they have, ranging from Formula 1 to football and the like. The problem with that also is not even on American streams I've watched. You get mostly things about the WWE game, or Total Divas, or the app, or whatever else WWE have besides the product they're trying to sell to you in a couple of weeks' time. And that's really quite poor, to see that they're focusing more on everything else apart from the one thing that fuels your main product. It kind of flows into my argument that WWE should stick to the wrestling, but then again, looking at where they are now with an image to maintain, it ain't gonna happen. But honestly, 
they need to promote it more on television. They don't. They only have... I mean, the last couple of pay-per-views, all we've had is Stephanie McMahon standing out there at the beginning of the show and announcing what the matches are. And I'm thinking to myself, it's like you're talking down to children, Stephanie. It's like you're saying to us, oh... You, all the people who watch us are people who are lost without us because they're wrestling fans. They love it. We have to kind of tell them what's going on so they can feel excited in the way we're announcing it. The way that made us feel excited was seeing the bloody match card read out before, before the last match or the main event segment. You know, where's that gone? Where's that gone? I mean, sure, we see the bloody pay-per-view match visuals come up every time before the end, go into a replay or go into the next segment of whatever goes on or a Cena hype package. You know, they've got all that. But it doesn't give us the impression that the announcers are excited about it. All they're doing is reading out what's happening, what could happen, and then effectively what's going to happen right now to fuel it next. That's really not what I want from Dairy Brother. And to honest with you, a lot of people don't either. WWE keeps telling Cole to speak in a very monotone way to try and explain a pay-per-view is coming right around the corner. Come on. Feel bloody excited for what this is. I mean, I try to. Every time pay-per-view predictions big comes around, I am trying to be the most excitable person I can be in having hope that a pay-per-view will give me what I want. But if the announcers have no faith in it, then what the hell are we even supposed to do? If the announcers aren't giving us the bloody feedback from them we need, then what's the point? Because they're the ones who are going to be watching, front row centre, these, all these matches. If they don't, okay, sure, sometimes the enthusiasm for matches, which we know are rubbish, can be a bit annoying sometimes if they are over-enthusiastic and it comes across as very fake. But the thing is, if an announcer, like, say, for example, a JR, or even, I would say, a Taz back on the Smackdown days, could hype... Hype a, a match or an event up enough, it'll make you hyped up about it. If they have belief in the storyline and convey that belief to you, it'll, be it'll become so much more valuable than Stephanie McMahon reading it out to you in as well in a monotone voice with no sense of shrill enthusiasm. You know, that's the problem. We need an announcer to highlight the reasoning behind buying the pay-per-view. We can't be expected to buy a pay-per-view just because it's a pay-per-view. Times have changed. It's a tough financial climate out there. It's a lot of money for the US fans. It is a lot of annoying time shuffling for people in the UK and other countries where the time difference is different. We have to dedicate our time to these. And if WWE can't make us feel excited for them, then what's the point of even trying? Because that would say to them, oh, we know you're going to buy regardless. We're not going to even bother. Let's just leave you out there. That's what they're doing. They're pretty much saying to you, we, we're going to give you a fishing rod, okay? Go out to the lake and fish out a pay-per-view. If you have it, then we, if you manage to get what we're trying to pull, then we will allow you to keep said fish and not cook it for your own dinner. Fact of the matter is, that's not the best way to go. If WWE were going to do this right, they would get us excited about the pay-per-view, but they're not even trying. And that's just not good business practice. You are trying to hype something. For the love of God, hype it. Don't just do SummerSlam or Survivor Series or WrestleMania or the Royal Rumble that way. In fact, I could even say for the Royal Rumble, if there's one way to hype it, you know the Royal Rumble match is coming, but for the love of God, put the elimination matches or the uh, tournament style brackets that allow qualification on television. Don't just allow them to say, I'm, I'm in the Royal Rumble match. That doesn't excite you. It means you have, you have a no to okay, okay, I know he's going to be in there because he's not in a title feud. I know this guy's going to be in there because he's a good shot for an number contender. You don't see a shock in there because you don't see someone fighting their way to be in this match, a la Chris Benoit and John Cena in 2004. The honest opinion, guys, is the pay-per-views need us to feel the excitement, not WWE to feel the excitement of knowing that regardless of whether the pay-per-view buy rates are going down or not, it is still going to be a burden on their pocket. Because honestly, Hell in a Cell isn't going to get too much money in. SummerSlam didn't get too much money in. They hyped SummerSlam to the moon and back and it still didn't get anything. But honestly, guys, they need to keep telling us pay-per-views are coming. Pay per views are coming and give us a reason to feel excited because every time I watch every time I watch a Raw that goes up the last week, a go home show, I never see people hyping up the pay per view. I never see 
I never, I can say, I never see at the end of a show what's this going to be like at Hell in a Cell this Sunday. I don't see the announcers giving us a shit that if you want to see the, what happens with this, you have to tune into the damn pay per view. They're saying to, oh, you know what? You, you I know some of you can't watch the pay per view, but for the love of God, you can keep an eye on the results via Twitter and stuff, right? It's like, oh, for the love of God, we will buy these. In my case, being a fan analyst, if I had the m money and the capability of owning a, a set-top box that I could buy them, I would do so. Because honestly, it would be the right thing to do. I WWE, I analyse you for God's sake. I can do what I want. But those who can't, they need reason. People who aren't doing analysis for YouTube or blogs or legitimate business practices like journalism and, and things like Chair Shot Reality and Trip Life Radio that like Justin Labar does and all that kind of stuff, they will watch the pay per view because they have to. Because they need to. People who don't have that will have to have a reason. If they aren't given it, then it's a bad thing. But then again, it gets worse. Because not only are they not hyping the pay per view enough on television for us to want to purchase it, they're also not technically giving us what is advertised because okay they give us matches which they have advertised a couple of weeks in advance but have you guys noticed i think many of you have noticed that in the last year or two wwe have done a rubbish job of booking matches and i've said this every time a prediction video comes up every time one comes up and i say to myself look they have booked far too few matches at this time in the build up they have built, say for example, three matches with one week to go. And then they book, like, say, four or five matches on one show. They realise that isn't enough. They then have to put some of them on at the last minute with no booking at all. They expect you to follow where the storylines have gone on the show, where you don't even pay attention to anyway because they don't promote them. And they put them on the show regardless. Fandango, Great Carly, I'm looking at your direction for this one. Honestly... Another time, WWE is undermining their own bloody pay-per-views because they're not doing what they should do. They are supposed to be hyping this. They're supposed to be building a storyline to give a nice payoff or a continuation to a payoff. If they don't do it, then what is the point? What is the point of them even trying if they're not even bothering themselves? What is the point of even having a pay-per-view if you're not going to give the fans a pr good amount of product for it? I mean, come on. Sure, we expect a WWE Championship, World Heavyweight Championship match, and then you've got the main, two main, one or two main feuds spoiling it behind them. That's all they have booked on pay-per-view for the last couple of pay-per-views and then add the rest in at the last minute because they realise, oh shit, we need to fill out the card. I remember, I, I, I am not normally nostalgic, but when it comes to this, I am very nostalgic. That back in the day, and I mean back in the day, say about 10 nine years ago, when I was really into the product, started getting in, that they used to book eight matches prior to the go-home show. Usually they have seven matches, and they put one more on the end, just to say, okay, you, you're already excited enough, but we're going to have one more just to curb it up a more. I've said it before, this is the way they should be doing this. But no, they had, show, they had matches on the damn night. They've done it for over a year and a half, two years now, and it shows that if you don't know what a match is coming up and where the builders come from, when it comes to rating a match, you don't really know where to start. Because honestly, if it's not somewhere in the upper echelons of the main event picture, a lot of casual fans aren't going to care. And that also comes across in the internet wrestling community as well. Because they want to analyse the whole thing. But if you're not giving enough time for the rest of the damn matches, and they haven't got enough time to build it up, they haven't got enough place to do it, then they won't actually care when it comes to them reviewing the match, like I've done in the past. In fact, that's the reason why I, by this, this upcoming week I'm starting Raw and Smackdown reviews again, so I can actually find a reason to care about the matches that they put on the pay-per-view at the last minute that have no real build to them, so I can actually do something better when it comes to reviewing my matches. You know, that's one thing I'm trying to do. But WWE, do I see them trying? No. They give the little matches further down the card a couple of minutes of show and everything is dominated by the big ones. They don't understand how annoying it is when you're going into a pay-per-view not knowing what two-thirds of the matches are. They don't seem to realise how toxic that is. Because you'll buy, okay, you'll buy for the main event matches. But remember in the US, you're paying upwards of 50, 40 to $50 per pay-per-view, minus WrestleMania. So honestly, 
Would you want to pay $50 for something where you don't even know what half the matches are beforehand? I think not. It means you're being sold short. But then again, you'd pay the same amount of money to go see Arsenal, the biggest season, biggest price season ticket in the whole bloody land of, of English football, to then realise, OK, we don't know where we're going to go. We don't know what's going to happen in this match. But then the one benefit is, you know the match is happening. You know about 45 to 30 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour or even two hours beforehand who the team is going to be. You kind of know who the team is and the opposition. You kind of know what their attacking and defensive styles are. You know where their weaknesses are. You know where all the press is going to be hyping around each end of each team. You know everything. You know going into a football match, a soccer match, exactly what you're getting. You, all you don't know is the result, or what could happen in there, so like a, like a red card, a yellow card, or how many fouls are going to be, how many shots are going to be on target. That's the thing. You know everything bar what happens in the match. With wrestling, in WWE's perspective, they aren't even booking everything. They have a pre-show, but this is the other point. The pre-show is being filled with matches that people actually want to see. I mean, WrestleMania had Wade Barrett versus The Miz, the Intercontinental Championship. Wrestling fans from years and decades gone by care about that championship. Okay, they may not give a shit that at the time Miz was fighting for it or that Wade Barrett was holding it, but they cared about the belt enough to say, put it on the main show. At SummerSlam, Dean Ambrose versus Rob Van Dam, we wanted to see that match. There was not a single person in the internet that I talked to or oversaw comments on that they did not want to see that match on the preacher. They wanted it on the main card. But instead they put matches with no build on the card. Biggie Langston, Curtis Axel at the last pay-per-view. <coughs> As an example of that, people have seen Axel versus Langston building up thanks to two or three weeks of solid build of Langston turning face and going after Heyman guys with CM Punk. That was logical. But of course, apparently, according to some ridiculous... I don't even know if Curtis Axel is injured or not. If he is, then he's injured. That's really sad to hear. But they then instead decided, okay, we're going to put him, Bean Langston, in a match for the US title with Dean Ambrose so we can say... Oh, he's, he's had a feud with the Shield. If he's feuding, he's had to... He kept, he kept CM Punk off the Shield. Therefore, he has a reason to fight Dean Ambrose. But there wasn't, that wasn't what was in the bloody build-up. Biggie Langston was fighting with Curtis Axel. It didn't make sense to have the match unannounced on the damn card. And not to mention that, we didn't, they didn't even mention that Curtis Axel was injured. They didn't even mention that Biggie Langston had to be moved to this match because of Curtis Axel. They then thought, you know, he's not looking for this title. If he can't fight for one, go for the other. The same thing happened with John Cena. They didn't even mention that he was not looking to use a rematch clause available for the WWE Championship. Okay, sure, that might have expired a month or two ago, but there's a reason to put him in a title match at the same bloody pay-per-view. Not to mention the fact that, okay, they put Fandango, great cock. Carly on, even though I know there is some antagonism from months of really, really poorly judged dance competitions to have one of those guys, aka Fandango, up their own ass about it. But they don't even give us a, re a statement on the bloody go home show that this is going to be on the show. We are then supposed to go, oh, really? Another throwaway? I mean, a couple of years, about a year ago, they even managed to put matches on the show because of interactions backstage. Jack Swagger, Justin Gabriel, and Elimination Chamber 2012. That was annoying to see that on the show. The fact that, I mean, come on, this is the thing. WWE have done things which make their pay-per-views look way worse than they should be before we even go in. They're not booking the damn shows to the fullest capability. They're not showing any enthusiasm on the go on the on the shows to highlight that a pay-per-view is coming and that they are looking forward to watching it in the flesh. They are not giving us everything we could ask for. And honestly, it annoys me. Because no wonder the pay-per-view buy rates are going down, because there is no viewer desire. There is no desire on the, on the go-home show to go, you know what, okay, it's taken a little while to convince me, but I'm going to buy this pay-per-view. WWE just seems to be locked in a bubble that us fans will buy whatever happens. That idea just... Has so much negative connotation towards it that it's, as a business model is pointless. You can't just expect people to buy in. 
I've seen people who go who go out and buy one of their favourite artists' new albums, and they then go, "Oh, this is rubbish compared to the last ones. I'm not listening to this again." They okay, they can you can expect as a fan for them to buy, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be good, and that means the next time one of their new albums comes around, they're not going to be in the best mood for it. They're not going to be in the best mood to say, I'm going to go buy this album, because it looks bloody good. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that in the slightest. They're going to basically say, you know what, their last album was rubbish. Why should I even bother? Why should I even bother to buy this? And that's the same area that WWE has been in for quite some time. If the pay-per-views in quality aren't very good, the fans will not buy. And the fact of the matter is, if they're not even putting bloody emphasis on the TV that this is worth buying, then the amount of viewer desire to buy is even lower than usual. We are fans of WWE, and as the main wrestling conglomerate in our world, we look at them for something. And if we don't look at them, we go somewhere else. But even if we go somewhere else, we always have a little eye on it. The pr it just, I just don't understand why WWE would even dare think that their, their product will be bought by every single fan who watches them. If it was the case, then they would be rich, because every fan would buy it. But unfortunately, no. Upping pay-per-view prices, not allowing everything to be booked and put on the show at the right time, lack of commentator and wrestler desire to promote it properly on the show, all that combined along with the pre-show putting matches on that aren't supposed to be on it, then I am honestly saying to you guys out there, Based on what I've said, do you agree WWE have shot themselves in the foot by not giving pay-per-views the right amount of press? It seems like they're too focused on charitable foundations, apps, and total divas to even really give a shit about the damn pay-per-view. And I don't... Pay-per-views are a mainstay of what we watch. They're one of the main reasons why we watch WWE, because it's a main progression element. If it was on TV every week, we'd have to just we would just be seeing the same old crap over and over again. There would be no blow off of anything. So seeing this, seeing a pay-per-view be put so far down, seeing the construct of pay-per-views go so far down is really not right. You know, I want to see pay-per-views be given more respect by WWE because it doesn't seem like they give it a lot. Unless it's WrestleMania or one of the big four, they never seem to care. Okay, they're playing on the loyalty of us. But most times, like every single pay-per-view, like every single gimmick, <coughs> every single match, every single feud is criticised. No wonder they would think, oh, we need the loyal fans to buy in for us. But then again, they need to regain our loyalty in this regard. They need to put on pay-per-view products, which one, have been well-booked, two, have been well-hyped, and three, give us the right amount of satisfaction in knowing we've spent the money or given the time towards it. If they don't do that, they will keep shooting themselves in the foot, and WrestleMania 30, no matter how much promotion they will do, from the ticket sales in, on November the 16th onwards, will not get the reception they need. And when that doesn't get as much money as they can, regardless of who they put on the show, what moments they give, it will prove that we need more than just blind to show them blind loyalty to ensure that we can get a something to you. If you can prove to us that this is worth investing in, and then we can judge it for ourselves and come back next time and say, okay, it was nearly what you promised us, but I'm going to do my own and see where I can go for the next one. If they give us that idea of that we they are trying then we will be beneficially happy to say we're going to keep trusting you if they can if we can trust them to put something out then they can trust us to get into it and guys i'm going to be done here <laughs> it's been a very intensely high octane rant but you know me these kind of subjects do irk me a bit Anyway, what do you guys think? Put your comments in the comment section below. Also, check out all my social medias. Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and my blog. I apologize for not putting a blog out this week. Like last week, I've just not really been in the right frame of mind to put blog posts out. Ideas really aren't coming up very easily on those things. Also, subscribe to CCVGP. I'm recording a uh, announcement now. I should have it up by the end of tonight, given some time. Because I need to edit the damn thing, and that might take a little while. 
Also, guys, uh, Q&A questions. I forgot to announce in the last video. Of course, the Q&A for November is on November the 30th. All you have to do, folks, is give me your questions. Three per person. They can be either wrestling or personal related, but do limit it to just three. Don't give me six questions, please. I have to keep saying it every damn time I do one of these things, and it is annoying as hell. But nonetheless, I thank you for your input. And the deadline for those questions will be on the 29th of November. So you've got a lot of time, folks. Get me your questions. Do what you can, please. Guys, I have been Cream Crazy. You've been people listening. This has been my rant on whether WWE undermined their own pay-per-view product. And I will see you guys next time. Cheers and have a fantastic weekend. Cream Crazy's Wrestling Rant, representing professionalism in the YWC since 2010. See you guys.